including Umgeni Water, ESCOM, and Red Payers Associations with the aim of finding lasting solutions in these communities. Working with Umgeni Water, we are building and upgrading water infrastructure which will significantly improve water supply in these areas that we spoke about. And we are working very closely with Umgeni Water to address many challenges which also affects their infrastructure <coughs> to provide us with the water that we expect. Some of the major water infrastructure projects include renovation of Depen Height Water Reservoir, which will be completed in June this year. This will improve water supply in the CPT and surrounding areas and many areas, especially areas of the south and the north. The replacement of water aqueduct to maximize water supply in Umlazi water reservoir um, <clears throat> at an estimated cost of 892 million rands. We are working on this project together with Umgeni Water. <clears throat> Upgrading of Umbumbulu pump station, which will be completed this year. Construction of a 28 billion Umkomazi dam, uh, of which uh, there is an investment which His Excellency, the President of the Republic, uh, Ubaba Usilu Ramaphosa announced that at least 800, more than 860 million has been uh, deployed or allocated uh, to ensure that we start doing something, especially with Lower Umkomazi Dam. Construction of Lower Umkomazi Dam water scheme to be completed in 2025 in terms of the time frames by Mgeni Water. Has a mere water reservoir upgrade, which will start uh, next year at an estimated cost of 70 million rands. Construction of Love River Emergency Scheme, which has already commenced and will be completed in February next year. These are kind of interventions which are put in place to attend to the issues of water shortages in the areas that we have spoken about. When it comes to electricity supply, ladies and gentlemen, we understand that in order for us to attract foreign direct investment, we must have a functioning city with adequate infrastructure. Apart from load shedding, we continue to face power outages as a result of aging infrastructure, vandalism, illegal connections, and theft. Through our collaboration with ESCOM, we have intervened in areas like George Dale and Hammersdale to ensure that residents are legally connected to the grid and we prevent overloading uh, their infrastructure or their assets. So we have held the public engagement in this regard. The work is in progress. Last week, we met with the Committee of Claremont to outline our program to upgrade electricity infrastructure following complaints of ongoing interruption of electricity supply, especially the area which is most <coughs> affected is Guadabega extension. <coughs> All those areas are now going to be uh, resolved in terms of upgrading our infrastructure. The project is starting uh, next week. This week they were preparing uh, all the preparations that they were supposed to be doing. That's a, an engagement we had with the community and that's a commitment, not a promise, which we gave to that community last week. Furthermore, we are implementing smart meter technology for both water and electricity infrastructure to prevent water loss and illegal electricity connections. <laughs> This system will also improve our billing system. There are many complaints that people are overbilled. Uh, some, when they come, we attend to their issues. Some will find that in some businesses, we find that we were underbilling them. So therefore, it necessitates uh, that we have a proper system in place, which is smart to conduct all this work so that we become responsive to the plight of our communities. That will also include uh, once this system has been rolled out throughout the city, we'll be able to have load management instead of load shedding. I'm sure yourself as media, you have also been affected by load shedding. Uh, so once this system is in operation fully, uh, we'll be able to load manage our communities, not to load shed them, because that also make them vulnerable for criminal activities when the areas are dark, when their stoves can't be put on, they switch on when their fridges can't be switched on in the two hours which uh, we apply the, the management uh, or, um, <coughs> of power. 
This technology will allow us to identify customers that are cheating the system as well. It will reduce the number of cheaters in the system. We are confident that this intervention will reduce electricity theft and illegal connections. It will also enable us to detect water leaks, as we are also going to be having a satellite detector, uh, which is now on the final stage of the tender uh, of our municipality, so that we can use technology to prevent water leaks that we are observing. Last Thursday, the municipality tabled a draft budget which prioritizes infrastructure development to improve the quality of service delivered, particularly in the area of water and electricity provision. In the next financial year, the city will invest $2.2 billion to improve electricity infrastructure and approximately $1 billion rent for water infrastructure. This demonstrates our commitment to make meaningful improvement in the lives of our people to create a conducive environment for investment. When it comes to fighting crime and crime, <clears throat> colleagues and members of the media, we have intensified our cleansing program for the CPD to get rid of the field as well as crime and crime. We call upon informal traders and small businesses to work with us to keep our city clean. A similar initiative will be accelerated in our secondary CPDs such as Spingo, Pine Town, Verulam, and Tongat. <clears throat> Keeping the city clean and free of crime is key in attracting more businesses into the inner city, as well as residents to come and reside in the inner city. Uh, we are anticipating that if all these programs can go well, we can be able to attract around 450,000 people to come and reside in the CPD. For this reason, we have deployed a dedicated team of Metro Police personnel targeting various crime hotspots in the CPD and to enforce traffic, business, and buildings by laws of our municipality. This is the work that has been started. We are cleaning the city. We are responding to the issues, especially on the hotspots uh, of crime so that we are able to reduce uh, the number of criminal activities that are taking place. The Haitian police visibility will go a long way in reducing incidents of crime in our city. As part of bolstering our crime-fighting initiatives, the municipality is currently finalizing the recruitment of 200 metropolis officers to increase our crime prevention capacity. This is our annual target. Every year we recruit 200 new uh, metropolis. Uh, yes, COVID-19 has disrupted some plans, but we are now resuscitating uh, those plans moving forward. The recently released crime statistics indicate that Etewin municipality contributes around 50% of crime in the province. Uh, obviously, we are the only metro in the province. So people migrate here, we have, we've got bigger numbers. Uh, we have more than 4 million people living in this city. Uh, hence, we become even the epicenter when it comes to diseases like TB, HIV, and AIDS. So therefore, we can't be immune even on crime because this is where economic activities are concentrated. <clears throat> While we recorded an increase in business robberies in the CPT, Umlazi, Kwamashu, and Inanda continue to lead in murder and sexual offenses. There are other new areas which have joined, like areas of Mbumbulu and surrounding areas. We are also concerned about the ongoing killings of public representatives, including councillors Amakosi and Izinduun, <clears throat> and members of the public in general, and the mass killings that we are observing uh, in our city. To accelerate our fight against crime, we meet regularly with the Minister of Police, Honorable Peggy Kaili, or General Peggy Kaile, and together we assess the progress in the implementation of crime prevention plans. Yesterday we had our steering committee on safer cities, which is attended by national officials uh, from SAPS as well as provincial and our municipality officials uh, to continue to put plans in place to respond to the issues of crime. Interventions that the minister and the city agreed upon include the following. Deployment of multidisciplinary teams to deal with the killing of councillors and officials, 
they are teams that are deployed by the minister in the province <coughs> who are following up on all these killings that are taking place. Uh, they are making some good progress in some uh, cases and uh, in some they are still uh, investigating. Making Amawuti a fully-fledged police station within a period of 12 months, that's a commitment that the minister has made. Uh, most of you will know the era of Amawuti, uh, how uh, a population is growing in that area, so therefore it only operates with a satellite police station. So now the minister has committed that there is work that will be done to ensure that there is a police station in that area. <laughs> Ensuring that insta the installation of CCTV technology uh, goes beyond the CPT. We received good news yesterday from Sanral as well that their upgrade of their cameras is at an advanced stage and their cameras will now be linked, uh, will sign a memorandum of agreement uh, between the Sanral, the police and the municipality, metropolis, to ensure that their information gets direct to, uh, to our systems and our op centers. Because we want to ensure that we recognize criminals when they arrive and when they leave the city immediately so that you prevent them to go and commit crime somewhere else and you prevent them to come and, 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 and commit crime in our municipality. So it shouldn't just be cameras that takes your photo, then you leave. It should be cameras that recognizes your face. Give us how many cases and offenses you have committed in South Africa, whether in all other provinces, so that the police can start uh, doing their work in catching you. Establishing dedicated teams to deal with bad buildings, drugs, and illegal liquor uh, outlets is the commitment that, <clears throat> together with the minister and his team, uh, will be able uh, to attend to. Part of this is the appointment of the new district commander of the SAPS in Etewini, uh, Major General Keswa. We wish to welcome her. Uh, we know her, we know her dedication. Uh, she is a, a, a really public servant that is loyal to the system. Uh, she has been leading some VISPOL uh, police activities around the province, and now she's deployed. <coughs> Excuse she's deployed to deal with Etewini. So we are hopeful that our collaboration with her <clears throat> in addressing issues of crime uh, will deal positive results. I met with her yesterday. The provincial commissioner came to introduce her to me as a mayor, and we welcome her, and we wish her all the best in executing her responsibilities in Etewini. On the city's investment drive, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, the advent of COVID-19 and the July civil unrest adversely affected the economy of our city. As part of our interventions to stimulate economic growth and attract new investment, the city has prioritized investment in catalytic projects. In February this year, we undertook a visit to various catalytic projects in the city, which included, among others, Chongweni development, where there will be a development of residential properties, a new hospital, and a mall, and all other facilities, which is a mixed-use development. Oceans Umtanga, where we have seen major developments for the first time, a Radisson Blue will be opening a hotel in the city. Uh, it is part of that Oceans development, and the mall that is <coughs> also being completed uh, in that area. Uh, we are told, I'm not a person of brands, but we are told that um, in this mall uh, there will be new stores which are international, uh, bringing new brands as well in the, in the city. Because people have not been remaining here, have been going to other cities looking for these international brands. So now we are having those international brands just here in Umtlanga. So those are kind of developments that you are talking about. Isibaya development, you have seen how uh, along our ocean, how we are developing that area <clears throat> with the new residential areas, of course, with the, some commercial and mixed-use development. Brickworks in Avoca, where the manufacturing will be taking place in a massive way uh, with a lot of employment that will be created. As well as our God Devon. I'm sure that you are interested uh, to get more information on God Devon. 
Our officials are working closely with the developers to ensure installation of adequate bulk infrastructure in these projects, which have a potential of creating over 200,000 jobs in the next five years. <clears throat> From 2020, we anticipate that um, up to 2026, that will be in a position to raise more than 217 billion rands investment into our city. To ensure that these projects are not disrupted, the municipality and the SAPS have established a task team to deal with unscrupulous business forums who invade construction sites and extort monies from developers. Uh, our position is very clear when it comes to this. We want to work with all the business forums because the Constitution gives their life uh, all the rights to exist. But what we can't uh, accept as a city is when you go on your own, you go and stop projects, you negotiate deals there. We have opened an office here in the municipality adjacent to our depot in Ali Street uh, where people can come and present their cases. When they want us as the municipality to come and intervene in terms of mediating, we are able to do that besides shutting down the operations. To ensure that these projects uh, are really uh, succeeding, will enforce the law. And when you commit crime, uh, the only thing that the police must do is to deal with you as such and treat you as a criminal. In response to complaints from small businesses uh, about lack of support, the city has established that SM SMME help desk to assist small businesses and social enterprises who want to access empowerment opportunities in the municipality within the confines of the law. This initiative is in line with our radical social economic transformation program of bringing the majority of people of Etewini into the mainstream economy. When it comes to commitment on good governance and clean governance, as the leadership of the municipality, we remain steadfast in ensuring that we run an, an accountable administration. We are pleased to report that the city is making great progress in, address in addressing the concerns that have been consistently raised by Auditor General. We have begun to convene by monthly meetings to monitor the progress in the implementation of our audit turnaround strategy. <clears throat> As a city, we pride ourselves that the city continues to obtain an unqualified audit opinion as reflected in the recently released Auditor General's report. <clears throat> we have also been able to address the matters that were raised by Auditor General from five to two matters. We have reduced them from five to two matters. <clears throat> this put us in a better position to achieve a clean audit in the next financial year. Those are the strides we are putting in place to turn the tide around. We once achieved it during the period of 2014 and 2015, so there's nothing that can stop us to achieve clean audit. Our main focus is on addressing irregular expenditure and implementing consequence management to officials who commit fraud and corruption in our city. We are pleased to report that since 2019, we have managed to reduce the backlog of disciplinary cases from 334 to 57. Those 57 are also in progress. Some of them they are at a stage where they will be finalized uh, in the near future <clears throat> so that we are able to see the results when it comes to that. We also pride ourselves as the city that we remain the only metro in the country that has not been downgraded by the credit rating agencies because of our stringent rate collection measures and ability to service our debts. Even during the lockdown levels, the city was able to raise the revenue seated uh, around 95%. So therefore, we still want to maintain that standard. And we still post with our triple A plus one status, credit status as a city, uh, which also makes us a destination for investment, uh, which also give us a good record to go to financial markets uh, whenever uh, we deem to do so. <clears throat> On the update of the city manager's post, ladies and gentlemen, one of the important tasks the current leadership has been seized with over the period of 100 days has been the filling of the position of the city manager. 
We want to commend the panel that was approved by the council to drive the process of selecting the best candidate to lead the administration of the only metro in Wazul Natal. Of the 286 applicants, 25 candidates were shortlisted. After a thorough selection process, the panel, the panel made a recommendation on the best candidate for the job. However, after deliberations, uh, the council did not approve the recommended candidate whose name cannot be divulged uh, at this stage uh, until he or she is informed about the outcome of the process. Despite these challenges, we are confident that the selection process was above board and followed all protocols as dictated by the Municipal Systems Act and Structures Act to ensure that there is no leadership vacuum at an administrative level. Mr. Musambele, who is seated uh, on my left, uh, will continue to act as the city manager up until the post is filled. We want to reiterate that the panel did its work diligently and did not break any law as our sole purpose was to find a suitable candidate. We are confident that due process was followed. It is rather unfortunate that the opposition rejected the panel's recommendation on the basis of rumors and gossip which were circulated in the media. They did not raise any substantive issue to challenge the selection process which was conducted. The implications of the council decision and the way forward will be discussed at the next S committee, then we'll update the members of the public on the way forward. <clears throat> now, as the mayor of the city, I reiterate the council took a decision which came as a recommendation of ESCO uh, that the report of the panel must be rejected. I'm, I'm talking as a mayor here, <clears throat> but I'm aware that the ANC, the majority part, um, also supported the report uh, of the panel. So there is a decision in place, so we'll update you as to what is going to happen uh, after uh, we've concluded our ESCO meeting uh, next week. We want to assure the residents of Etewin that we'll handle this matter with the, with the care and agency it requires to ensure that our municipality remains stable and continues to deliver on its mandate. I thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Mayor. <coughs> thank you, Mayor. Um, welcome, um, Acting City Manager. So we will now open the floor to questions from yourself. And how we will do this is I will assign a number to you so that you know how to follow one another. Um, and then when you ask a question, please start by introducing yourself and the media house that you represent. We take five questions at a time and then we run through the questions until we are done. Ubabu Mayor may um, um, invite other members of staff, other members of the municipality uh, to join him in answering some of the questions uh, that you posed. We are now ready then, ladies and gentlemen, to take your questions. Um, this is number one. That is number two. Is there a third hand? This is number three. So maybe let's start with this first three. Introduce yourself and the media house you represent, and then please uh, post, post your question. Thank you. Thanks, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Kabil Singh. I'm a journalist at News 24. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I just want to, I have a few questions about the municipal manager position. I mean, just in terms of, you know, you mentioned openness about the, the process for that, but the committee just was made up of three people. You are one of those three people. And the report that you're mentioning, will that report be made public, the one that was um, considered, the one that the ANC gave you, but the rest of the, the council didn't? And, I mean, in terms of service delivery, uh, obviously, obviously there's been some, some issues with electricity infrastructure, with aging infrastructure, with water. I mean, will there be any sort of consequences for officials or even politicians that were involved in terms of infrastructure and aging infrastructure, you have to have an overlap of maintenance in any sort of city, in any situation. So, I mean, it's great that there's obviously measures to, to repair all of that, but what sort of consequences in terms of the delivery of services, even with service providers that weren't really 
coming to the party that, that may have robbed the city and raised their of money. And uh, do you believe the alliance between the ANC and ABC leaves the uh, council like other metros in the city there, in the country, excuse me, in you know, a rather precarious position? I mean, <laughs> not just because of the ANC losing a majority, but it also would be a very difficult position just for the city in terms of monthly budgets and coming to, to certain decisions. I mean, do you feel that that maybe that could be a, a difficult position for the city? The second set of questions. <coughs> Thank you. Was it fair? Uh, yeah. In the first question, you can call the way to end it. Were you surprised by that? The fourth end? Take this for now and uh, Thank you very much, colleagues, for your questions. You can switch your mic off, uh, Mabuso. <coughs> um, <coughs> let me start with the News 24 coming on the manager's position. Um, <coughs> will the report made public? Uh, of course, once all the processes um, uh, are finalized, you make the process public. But since uh, the report has been rejected from the panel, <coughs> uh, those are the, the integrities that the ESCO would need to persist with. The ESCO is not going back to review the decision of the council. Remember that the council uh, is the highest body in the municipality. 
So once the council <laughs> takes a decision, we'll live with that decision. So therefore, the ESCO is to look at the integrities uh, on the management of this process, because this process needs to involve those who participated in it. Our human resource still need to write letters to inform those who applied what was the outcome of the processes and all of that, and those who were prioritized as the top three uh, shortlisted candidates, they need to be taken into confidence. Hence, we are not going to divulge uh, more details at the moment uh, on those aspects. So we respect their rights, that they need to be informed formally and properly uh, so that they, <clears throat> they do not accuse the panel and the municipality uh, of flouting the processes. <clears throat> Aging infrastructure and uh, what becomes the consequences for the officials who are involved. Uh, the process has already been started, especially you'll find that there is a contract which is supposed to be followed up and be processed, but it just gets seated with somebody and uh, not forwarding that to relevant committees and all of those details. So we have already started to take action against the officials who are, who are not doing that. Those who, those who are <coughs> lazy, who are not doing their work, uh, I'm sure you are aware that uh, this year in July, the issue of the uh, performance contracts will be taken even to lower levels because it's used to be at a senior management level. So each and every person given a responsibility must now account um, on those conditions that the contract stipulates exactly what is required and expected from that individual. So the consequence management uh, are going to be applied to those who are not doing their work. Uh, the issue of enforcing and instilling the culture of work that will make us to become productive as a city, to ensure that people come at work on time, people don't leave early, and uh, as well as the absenteeism levels are reduced. Those are the systems that the city manager is seized with to put in place to ascertain that the productivity levels uh, are improving in the municipality. Yes, we have more than 26,000 uh, employees uh, in the city, but productivity, it does not reflect that all of them, they are hard at work and working tirelessly to deliver on the services. So we've conducted a skills audit, which also gave us some answers uh, on the number of areas where you'll find that things are not happening because the engineers uh, are, are, are mislocated or, the, or, or, or mislocated to positions where they are not adding value uh, in making sure that the municipality become more productive. So those are the things administrative that the city manager uh, is, is seized with. Um, <clears throat> Cost corner, uh, we, we, we get your question that uh, there were comments that the DA said the process must be uh, nullified. Uh, how the report of ESCO is captured, there were no dispute about it because the report of ESCO uh, recommendation was very clear, was that we reject the candidate who is recommended. So the steps that need to be followed then <coughs> uh, are the steps that will be guided by our own um, legislations in terms of conducting this work what needs to be done. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that issue in the ESCO, uh, the modalities uh, of such uh, uh, action that needs to be taken. But the, the council as the highest decision-making structure of the council, uh, of this municipality, <coughs> so its decision still stands that it's rejected uh, this report. So when the mayor spoke about other political parties who supported uh, the recommendations uh, of the panel, it does not imply that the decision is now nullified of the council. So the decision of the council to reject the recommendations of the panel still stands. <clears throat> the <clears throat> uh, Tammy, we hear you that uh, <clears throat> were we surprised about the outcome of the the ESCO and uh, its recommendation. <clears throat> and I don't want to be tempted to respond on the issues of relations of parties. Remember that I'm a mayor. <clears throat> a mayor is only responsible to run the municipality. 
but political parties on their own, they carry a responsibility to manage the relations, to assess them, evaluate them. So I think that question will be relevant also to go to the provincial sector of the ANC in the province uh, to talk more on the relations uh, that are taking place in the city. <clears throat> so we're not surprised. Uh, we're not surprised at all with the outcome uh, that um, <clears throat> we received. Then the Mavuso, I uh, hear your arguments um, <clears throat> that you are saying there's nothing that in this city is going well uh, since uh, Babu Mlaba and the things have deteriorated. Uh, we, we want to admit that there are challenges in the city. But we also want to share with the members of the public. There are many strides we have put in place and there are many achievements we have achieved as the city. So therefore, when there are challenges, <clears throat> Those challenges do not uh, wash away uh, the achievements and the things that we are scoring. But we've got to attend to those challenges. Those challenges are issues of cleanliness. Those challenges are issues of water leaks. We acknowledge them and we are working on them. Those challenges of sewer spillages. Those challenges of street lights, which are also affected by criminal activities. Uh, there is something there in our globes, uh, in our street lights, which they also make use of it as part of the substance that they are utilizing, those who are, who are smoking drugs. They steal that because they want that thing. Uh, so it's, it's a matter that we are working with the police and other law enforcement uh, institutions to look at the vandalism of our infrastructure. We have discovered that in some areas where there's been challenges of water, is that people have interfered with our infrastructure. They vandalized it. Uh, you recall during December, during festive season, we had to close beaches because a particular pump was not working, so we polluted the beach. But we discovered that the valve was vandalized. And we had to attend to that. So I'm saying some of the matters will require law enforcement agencies to collaborate with us as a city because they are not of our own making. Uh, when people, they decide to steal water, we put main pipes, they start uh, putting their own illegal pipes in our system, in our infrastructure, which will then affect others who are paying for services not to receive water as expected. So it talks on the collaboration and the social contract that we need to sign with our communities. What we need from our communities, let us work together. Working together, let us uh, disown those who are doing illegal things. Let us support those who are paying for services. Let us support those who are receiving services in a manner that is expected and legal. So that's what we need to instill as a culture. A, a culture is not something which will be generated now and get implemented now. A culture is a process that we need to instill to the behavioral patterns of our own communities. Those behavioral patterns of our communities should also support us in doing our work. When you steal water, when you go and put your own connections to our, what happened to the, to the pump that I'm talking about as well, which also polluted some rivers, is that the informal settlement went there and disconnected our system, the pump, the sewer pump system, and put their own connections, and some of those people are even selling that electricity that they are stealing from us. Then our pump is unable to work and operate as expected. Then we pollute rivers. So those are the kind of attitudes that, uh, but the actions that we have put in place as the council, uh, as the municipality as well, is to ensure that those informal settlements are now being reticulated. We are putting electricity in those areas so that people will receive electricity in a legal way, rather than stealing uh, from the grid. Um, <clears throat> we have been answering these inquiries, Mavuso. Um, the DA wrote me a formal letter. They accused us that the ANC Deployment Committee sat and decided on three names and all of that. I responded, and my response still remained the same. There is no Deployment Committee that sat and decided on the candidates of the city manager's position. Why we are saying that? The ANC is very clear in how it deals with its own business. 
I'm not speaking on behalf of the ANC, but as a deployee of the ANC, the only limit that the ANC has is when it deploys us as mayors, deputy mayors, as you know that we conducted interviews before we were appointed, uh, the speakers, chief whips or whips of the council, and the, dealing with the list of councillors uh, who will be deployed in the municipality. So <clears throat> what is being raised in the media, uh, we've been saying to the DA, please give us evidence of what you are talking about. You can't talk about rumours. So if somebody was just having his or her own drinks in a particular tavern, then you meet that person on the street, then starts talking things that, uh, uh, which, which have got no base. Uh, then we can't entertain that. And uh, our position is very clear, is that we have conducted the process clinically. Even candidates who participated in these interviews as the chairperson of the panel, they commended the panel for conducting its work professional and ethical. When we gave them the opportunity, because remember, you give candidates the opportunity to ask you questions as the panel. Instead of asking us questions, they said, but we are happy with everything that has been done here. Uh, we, 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 we are certain that even with the media spats that have been there uh, on, uh, on the news, uh, we know that this process uh, is done clinically. Now, I can communicate with you uh, to, to deal with the accusation that uh, uh, in those allegations there were three names that people spoke about, whether those three names uh, I can't mention those three names, but I can tell you that uh, they, they are not there. They are not there. It's only one name which is there. So I don't understand now where does that thing come from and uh, <clears throat> uh, what, what, what gives it life uh, because there must be evidence in whatever we talk about. <clears throat> so the issues of the ANC and how the ANC run its own business will direct those to the leadership of the ANC to answer. But I was just answering on the scope of work that we are given to conduct in the city uh, to deal with the issues of uh, uh, administration. <clears throat> so what we are looking for as a city, we are not the ones who, who develop the adverts. Uh, there are regulations given by COGTA that guide us that for the position of this post and the other position of that post and the Department of Public Administration. <laughs> so there are requirements. Those requirements, there's no question there which asks you uh, how political affiliation uh, do you have, what political affiliation do you have, and how close you are with the politicians and uh, whether you are the majority party or the minority party. There are no questions of such. <laughs> We conducted a clear process, a selection process. We separated the interviews into two. The first session dealt with the case study, where we wanted to check the competence of candidates. How are they going to turn around the municipality, which we gave them as a municipality uh, which is dysfunctional. <clears throat> then they gave their own responses and their plans and the uh, action plans in terms of uh, the issues of culture, in the municipality, as well as leadership, uh, style of leadership they'll be providing. So all these details, those details were, were furnished to us. Then the second session is the session which dealt with questions. They were given questions, they had to answer those questions. So we can tell you that um, we want to applaud all participants who participated uh, in this process because they performed very well, all of them. It's just that the selection process will need to, to rate people and ensure that those who perform more than the others, then they are the ones who get recommended. So that's how you conduct uh, the, the interviews. <clears throat> this is not a political process, Mabus. I fully agree with you. This is an administrative process. Hence, the council takes a decision that since the city manager will be working very closely with the mayor, so the mayor must be sharing the panel. Not that the mayor is put there because he's the mayor of the ANC. Whoever who becomes the mayor, those are guidelines, will become the chair of the panel. But if the mayor is not available, the mayor is at liberty to delegate a member of the council, a councillor, who will represent the mayor. 
Then the, 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 the regulations also require that we must have a second person, second counselor in the panel. Then that second person, the council took a resolution that councillor Madala, because he, not because of his position and his deployment that he's the ANC, because he's the chairperson of governance, governance which conduct oversight over administration of the municipality. He must form part of the panel. So therefore he participated. Then we had to appoint an external person to finalize this panel, because the, 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 the panel must also look at issues of gender, parity. Then we, we identified the CEO of Moses Kodane Institute, Dr. Ellenson, who is a female, to come and assist us on the processing of this particular exercise. So we were three in that panel. Then the administration of the city supported us in conducting our work. So it doesn't become a political issue. It's an administration issue, but where politicians are given responsibility because the mayor will be working very closely with the city manager. So therefore, the mayor must also preside over the appointment of a person that the mayor will be playing oversight to. So I think that's how the, the, the process, there was no political interference. Now I'm talking, yes, I'm talking as a mayor, as well as the chairperson of the panel. There was no political interference in the process. I want to give the members of the public an assurance there was no political interference in the process. We conducted it clinically. And uh, you know these processes, colleagues, we need to be careful because these processes, they, they are dedicated in nature. So there are people who participate. So any candidate who participated in this process has got the rights. If there was a dissatisfaction about how the process was conducted, they've got the right to, to raise those disputes. They've got the right to do so. So if there are people who feel, who feel that they will need to raise those disputes, they are at liberty to do so. The laws of this country allows them to do so. So it can become an issue of political parties meeting, having a position of political parties, to, to say we take this position. <laughs> it should be guided. You need to give fundamental reasons why you can't accept the recommendation of the panel. So it can't be the political reason. If the political reason given is that we saw the media articles about this issue and the media queries about this issue, so therefore we reject the recommendation of the panel. It does not constitute the fundamental reasons why you can't accept the recommendation of the panel. So therefore, but there is a council decision. Remember, we respect the council decision. I'm, an, I'm a mayor in this municipality, so therefore I'm also a custodian of council decision. And the council decision is that the panel recommendations are rejected. I thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Do you have any, any more questions?
there is going to be trouble and there is uh, two very uh, important reports that are coming up uh, in the next couple of months, which is the uh, and uh, and uh, the budgets. Um, so, you know, those, those are also, you know, I think what we're hearing right now is, you know, it's, it's a flip of a coin whether they, they're going to pass on us. So I just want to ask, you know, is is the ruling party which you know you lead um, is, is is it willing to work with uh, with uh, with opposition parties uh, just for the sake of the city because I think what we're seeing right now is you know it is a, a trouble of of very important positions or very important processes being gridlocked because uh, you know the the main parties or the opposition parties and the ruling parties in the city cannot agree. So I just want to know is are there any sort of aspect, um, we take the budget for example, the DA is sort of once more um, funded to be to, uh, to be directed towards infrastructure for electricity and water. Is there a matter where, you know, the, the city or the mayor or the ruling party can work with opposition parties for the sake of the running of the city? Thank you. Third one. I like how Mabuso put things there. <laughs> no, let me start with the issue of the deputy mayor. Uh, first, you can see that we don't have chairpersons of committees here uh, because they are a, a executing their own responsibilities as committee chairpersons. Uh, Councillor Mavunda, as the chairperson of infrastructure, whenever there are challenges that relates to his committee, uh, he's bound to go there and address those issues, as Councillor Sabelo used to do when he was still the infrastructure, whenever there were issues of water, sanitation, so, and electricity, so he's the first person to go there. Why, why the chairperson must become the first person? To go there is because the mayor, as a head of a political head of the institution, should not go there first. 
I must receive a report from the chairperson of the committee on how things have been processed so that at my strategic level as the mayor, I will be able to conduct necessary interventions. So therefore, it's important to, to clarify that. So there's no competition at all. I'm the chairperson of uh, finance, security, and emergencies. So I'm seized with those responsibilities of security, uh, issues of disasters, and issues of finance. Hence, you see how we are performing, in, as we are performing better in terms of uh, our investments and everything that we have uh, shared with you. Now, once the chairperson and his committee, there is a standing committee, where they deliberate on matters, they have an agenda to resolve committee challenges, then those issues get elevated to the ESCO, which I am sharing as the mayor. Then the ESCO processes those reports. Once that report is processed by ESCO, I then become the mouthpiece of the ESCO, as the chairperson of the ESCO. So therefore, in whatever the council decision has been, uh, whatever council decision has been taken, the mayor must communicate that. In whatever decision that the ESCO has taken, the mayor must become a mouthpiece to communicate that. So there's no competition. So if you find the deputy mayor working there, you interview him, what is he doing? So he just give you answers. There's no problem about that. But the policy positions, the decisions of the collective of ESCO must be communicated by the, by the mayor as a custodian of policies and decisions of the council with the delegated powers by the council to the mayor to interact with external stakeholders. I, I hope I've clarified. So there's no competition. We work very closely. Uh, we, I saw him when he was uh, standing out. Uh, we, we met, meet and greet. Uh, we laughed, we made some jokes. Then after that, he left. Then let me come to the, <clears throat> uh, to the issue of water, Mavuso, you are raising. There is a challenge at the moment. Uh, the challenge with Umgeni water infrastructure because uh, they are bound to stage and manage how they distribute water to us because their infrastructure as well has got some challenges. So therefore, you'll find it in, in, in other areas, there will be water interruptions. Why? Because they are managing it, because there are challenges they are experiencing in their own assets. So we work together with them, but we have agreed with them that whenever there are such challenges, it shouldn't be us as a Tegwini that must communicate that. It should be Mgeni Water issuing public statements on their infrastructure and what is the challenge on their infrastructure. <clears throat> At the moment, the other challenge that we are faced with on the northern part of the city because we are hands-on, we are full-time, we are working here full, on full-time basis, is the issue of electricity. <clears throat> uh, there are people and contractors <clears throat> who are putting fiber in our seat. Remember, they are not the contractors appointed by the seat. They are doing their own work. <clears throat> but in doing their own work, what they've been doing, they interfere with our assets. Water, they break our pipes, then the community get affected. Now with electricity, many communities do not have electricity as we speak. We are, we are attending to those matters. Our teams are working 24-7 uh, to ensure that we address those challenges. So they've interfered with our electricity. So hence, many areas have been affected. But there is work in progress in addressing that. The issues of crime, uh, Councillor Fozzi appear was correct, and uh, I'm, 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 I'm reaffirming what uh, she said, that will, will ensure that we increase the capacity of metropolis. We are not only dealing with the capacity in terms of uh, uh, personnel, we are also giving them uh, other uh, gadgets to work. Uh, at the moment, we are piloting body, uh, body cameras. We are piloting that project because we want them to use body cameras when they do their work. So that is being piloted because we want to increase the capacity of our metro and their capabilities to address uh, issues of emergency and the uh, challenges that the city is faced with. Uh, I'm sure we are one metro uh, that has also put more resources in equipping our metropolis. We are now at the rescue uh, aspect of doing work. 
Um, we support SAPS with our rescue teams because we gave them more equipment to be trained in that area as well as to do their own work. So we, we, we have a metropolis that has got um, <coughs> capacity. When I was in the Human Rights Commission, uh, one of the commissioners there uh, confirmed that some of those who came before the commission, they gave evidence that Metropolis was better off during the unrest. Although their footprint was not all over, but business people responded and the business chamber of commerce and industry in the city said that at least Metropolis did something which is commendable. So that must be noted as well. So when you talk about the capacity of our Metropolis, we talk about Metropolis that uh, has got the capacity but, um, and capabilities, but we still need more, mem more members of Metropolis. Why we still need them? Because we must have at least 5,000 Metropolis officers. For now, we are seated at 1,800, which is uh, around 2,000. Now, let me come to the issue of um, engagements in between uh, during the processes, because we're supposed to uh, to resolve on the matter of city manager last week, Thursday, um, there were some technicalities. We agreed that we'll defer the matter to Monday's meeting. Not that there were differences. The report was not presented because of some technicalities. Then the report was then therefore presented on Monday. Yes, those who are tasked with that responsibility uh, to talk to other political parties, not to lobby them for who must be appointed because that on its own will become an interference, a political interference. But to lobby parties that the report that will be presented uh, to the panel should be a report that will enable the municipality to do its work. Because Auditor General has raised a query with the filling of this vacancy, a uh, post of city manager. Treasure, National Treasure has also raised a concern Provincial culture and national culture raised a concern. So therefore, uh, we are bound uh, to finalize this issue. Uh, that's why we had to accelerate the processes. And uh, I can report that with all the processes which were conducted, we were still within our timelines as the panel. What we presented as the schedule uh, to, the, uh, to the council of conducting our work, we stick to that schedule a hundred percent. So that's what we did. We completed on time. Now, uh, are we afraid of vote of no confidence? A uh, vote of no confidence are part of the democratic process. Uh, they can not be put away if they are parties that feel that there is a need for that. But this matter belongs to political parties. It does not belong to me. Uh, whom will be also affected by the very same vote of no confidence if it happens. <clears throat> but political parties are going to manage that, their relations, ensure that they, they work on the issues which are before them. Um, when, when, when I responded to the question, <clears throat> uh, I did clarify that the ESCO is not going to be reviewing the decision of the council. The council is the highest decision-making body. So the ESCO is the implementing structure of the council decisions. So the ESCO will need to sit and look at how it is going to implement that decision of the council. So that's a meeting. No reviewer, nothing. We can't review the decision of the highest structure as ESCO. But of course, in executing that, that, that resolution of council, we will seek legal advice so that whatever we do is within the ambit of the law. So that's what we'll do. <clears throat> uh, are we willing to work with other parties because we see that balance of forces are not in our favor? Uh, since we came here, even in the previous term, I appealed to political parties that let us handle matters of the public with care. And we, we don't need to put politics in each and everything. It's not about the numbers. It's about how we run the municipality to be responsive to the aspirations of our communities. For instance, the issue that the DA has raised with us, with the budget, is the issue which we have addressed in this budget. In this budget, we have made necessary allocation to deal with the issues of the aging infrastructure. 
in this budget, there are many systems that have been put in place to respond to the plight of the poor, especially and in areas where there is no water. In this budget, we have catered for the expansion of reservoirs, where we see that the quantity of water we have in those reservoirs is no longer adequate to provide the communities since the households have grown in that area. We have also put in this budget the, the system in terms of upsizing our water pipes. Remember, in other areas, there are challenges because the pipes that we are using are no longer adequate to provide adequate uh, 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 quantity of water to communities because there are many new developments and settlements in the areas which we are talking about. So therefore, it necessitates that you start a program to ensure that you enlarge, uh, you, 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 you upsize uh, your own pipes. <laughs> In the CPD, uh, you've been receiving complaints as media that we are busy working here. We have, we have become a construction site because we are also dealing with the aging infrastructure. We are dealing with the bulk water pipes in the CPD. We are dealing uh, with our sewer bulk pipes in the CPD. We are dealing with the landscaping in the CPD, as we have seen around the river town next to uh, ICC there. That program is continuing in the CPD to, to beautify our CPD. Uh, to reclaim our own space as a Teguini municipality. Now, we are also having what we call an inner city regeneration plan. That inner city regeneration plan incorporates the issue of the bad buildings. Uh, if you can walk around here, we have started to see that people are starting to repaint their building, some are starting to rehabilitate their building, because we are, we are enforcing the regulations and the bylaws of our, of our municipality. So we are happy with the, uh, with the positive response, but we are not happy with the pace. Why we are not happy with the pace? Because we want more landowners uh, and property owners to ensure that they start beautifying their own buildings within the CPD, so that the CPD will look good. <clears throat> uh, we are addressing issues, these multidisciplinary teams that we are deploying in the CPD, are dealing with the storm water systems, they are dealing with the lighting uh, in the CPT, they are dealing with the water leaks and sewer uh, spillages and, uh, and, and all of those challenges that uh, are confronting our, our issue. They are also dealing with the informal trading. Informal trading, our approach is that we have allocated people's spaces, but we must admit as a city that those spaces are not enough to cater for everybody. Those who are given license to operate, they are lesser than those who are operating illegal in the CPD. There is a program uh, of allocating further sites and places for other informal traders to be relocated so that we open up space in the CPD for other businesses to work freely without any uh, interference and uh, interruption by those who are trading on the streets. But those who are trading on the street, they are looking for the means to, to, to feed their families and to support their kids who are in universities, uh, who are studying in different schools. So therefore, if you chase them away without providing an alternative place for them to trade, you are actually perpetuating criminal activities in the city. So we do not want to take that approach. Uh, we treat them with respect, uh, but we also want to enforce to them that they must open up uh, our pathways for people to walk freely uh, in the CPD. Uh, lastly, the issue which uh, I must address. So within the inner city regeneration plan, we are working with private partners to ensure that there are opportunities for the gap market, social housing within the CPD, uh, as well as the uh, student accommodations around the CPD, uh, so that uh, we have people who reside in the CPD. But the advances which we have put in place uh, in terms of stabilizing our area and how the issue of crime is being tackled, you are correct. Uh, you are correct, uh, Praveen, when you say um, <clears throat> the, the operation should be intelligence-driven. It shouldn't be about bringing more numbers of police at the point at Albert Park. It should be about what are you targeting. So those uh, were the discussions we had yesterday with the newly appointed uh, head of police in Etewin and the provincial commissioner. 
there are plans that they are putting in place. We'll be meeting with them uh, to present those plans and finalize those plans so that we deal with issues of crime decisively. And uh, I can give assurance to the members of the public that in this CPD and in our uh, uh, secondary towns, they will see differences. In our communities, we are also building community structures to fight against crime, to combat crime in their own areas. So those strides uh, will give us and will yield positive results in terms of reducing the levels uh, of crime in our city. Uh, I also want to, to touch on the issue which um, <clears throat> has been raised before. You know, as a city, uh, we acknowledge the weaknesses in the system. Part of those weaknesses uh, is that uh, we need to start charging people who do not want to work. And that process has been started. And we must intensify that process. We need to deal with corruption decisively. Those who still believe that they can still commit corruption in the city, they must do it on their own, uh, in their own risk. We will be ready to conduct a lifestyle audit to our SCM department because they will be the first team to conduct lifestyle audit in this municipality. As soon as the national issues on the bargaining uh, chambers there are concluded on the lifestyle audit. Uh, otherwise, we're ready as the city, but now there must be those uh, consensus uh, there must be that consensus that must be uh, strike, stricken um, in, in, when it comes to the uh, issues of uh, skill, um, uh, lifestyle audit uh, in our municipality. So we, 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 we are committing ourselves to the members of the public that this municipality is turning things and tight around. Uh, to cite a few examples, we have Operation Sugumasake, which we've been visiting areas. Let me take an example of Ward 94. In Ward 94, the community there complained about the unavailability of Sizagala Center, Regional Center, for them to be able to access the closest center to pay for services of the municipality and get information. That center, as we speak, it is now operational. We have delivered it. They complained about the roads. I went there to launch, to introduce contractors and I also went back there now to, to open those roads which have already been constructed. So this is how we are responding on issues. The issue of the bridge, uh, most of you know Pilani Mall, Pilani Velu Mall in Umlas. So the community have been raising a challenge because that river uh, is big and people are using that river to cross over uh, to reach to their own uh, 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 residence. Now, the challenge has been that the bridge has not been there. The community took initiative to construct their own, uh, let me call it their own local traditional bridge. And we responded to that plight. The bridge I'm talking about, it is being constructed as we speak. Then they also complained about the lighting in that river because there are many people who have been killed there and there are many criminal activities taking place. If you can go there now at night, you'll see the lighting that we have put in that area. So this is how this municipality is responsive on the issues that people are bringing before us. But we, we must admit, needs of the community uh, are, are limitless. So we can't resolve everything now. So we are dealing with the issues of human settlement, dealing with the transit camps that are in the municipality. Of course, the speed and the pace in which we are moving uh, is not the one that we expect and that we want but because of the unavailability of uh, resources, especially finances, uh, to deal with that. But we are happy to report that MEC uh, Sbia, who is responsible for public works and human settlement in the province, he is working very close with us to assist us to deal with the uh, slums clearance as well as the transit camps in our municipality. So he's doing a very uh, good job when it comes to that, and we are working closely with him. So those were the issues raised. Uh, I hope I did not leave anything without being attended to. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It does indeed seem like you've addressed all the issues. Colleagues, I think this is a good point to wrap it up. Uh, some of you have requested one-on-ones with Mr. Mayor. We will do them right here. Uh, so I will just request that uh, those who are still remaining on this side um, um, are fairly silent because some of those one-on-ones are going to be live crossing. So um, I'd like to thank you for your, for your time this morning. 
like to thank you for your presence. Babu Mayor, thank you. We know with the budget hearing starting, it's a quite a packed program that you have. And to thank my colleagues also for, for helping us to arrange uh, this morning session. We will then adjourn the session here whilst we allow those who require one and one with the mayor to, to interview the mayor. Thank you, Babu Mayor. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Sia Bong. Sia Bong. I forgot it. I can't